Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Richard Legrand Odyssey Diver. This is the Royal Blue version. This watch is available from rlgwatches.com for US$429. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the outer watch box comes protected by this matte black cardboard outer sleeve which one removes and this is the outer watch box itself. So one removes the lid and inside there is a foam panel which protects the travel roll and this is the travel roll itself. So very good attention to detail. The travel roll is made from a chocolate brown PU leather and the popper is signed with RLG which is engraved to a high standard. Flawless stitching throughout and I think Richard Legrand deserves full credit for including this because it is something one would use when travelling. It also makes a credible alternative to the default option of a cardboard or plastic watch box. So as you can see, inside it's also nicely finished with the RLG brand emblem embossed. And there are two pouches. So on the right hand portion we have a vintage style Tropic strap which I'll take out and show you. So this follows the classic vintage Tropic style. This is made from silicon rubber, nice and supple vented on the underside so it allows perspiration to wick away from the wrist solid stainless steel buckle and tang mirror polished tang and also brass satin finish buckle and also it's signed with the rlg brand emblem to a high standard so good quality one feature i like about it is the first keeper has two uh, notches as you can see and they prevent the first keeper sliding out of position so good attention to detail and the second keeper is free to slide so I'll just show you the other end of it. As you can see, very well executed and it follows the classic Tropic style with the vents. Uh, I like these perforated style Tropic straps. They're very comfortable to wear in warm weather when one's wrist sweats. With regards to the other items, this is a nylon mallet which comes with the watch and I like it. It's innovative because the handle section unscrews and that means one can store it with less space in the watch box or alternatively put it into one of the pouches in the travel roll which I've showed you. So I like this. The purpose of this nylon mallet is to drive out the push pins for resizing the bracelet and they've also included a, a push pin tool as you can see which is nailed finished to a high standard. So one uses the nylon mallet to tap the push pin and that drives out the push pins out of the bracelet to make resizing easy. So it's nice to get those tools included. This is the plastic warranty card and I'm pleased to report that the Odyssey Diver is covered by a two-year international warranty which is very reassuring. Usually micro brands at this price point of US$429 would only cover their watches with a 12-month warranty. So to get a two-year warranty at this price point really is exceptional and Richard Legrand deserves full credit for that. This is the owner's instruction manual and also details the terms and conditions of the international warranty. Although basic, it does suffice in detailing the operation of the movement used, which is the Miyota Calibre 9039. And lastly, one also gets two stainless steel spring bars for the Tropic style vintage strap that I showed you earlier. So with regards to the specification of the piece, this is the Richard Legrand Odyssey Diver in Royal Blue. There are various colour options but this is my personal favourite, the blue sunburst style with blue sapphire bezel which is fully loomed with C3 Superluminova. For the 39mm case diameter we have a 45.8mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 13mm and a lug width of 20mm. The bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the two button push clasp which is signed to a very high standard with the RLG brand emblem. So I really like the two button push clasp, brush satin finish to the top side, flanks and underside and we also have a large mirror polished bevel machined and I absolutely love the look of that chamfer which is machined on the edge of the clasp. Beautiful finishing. I also like the detail of the bracelet because it's brush satin finish on the top side underside but we have mirror polished caps on either end which are very aesthetically pleasing. Another detail I really like is the use of pivoted female end links as you can see. This allows for extra articulation on the end link of the bracelet. It can pivot underneath the end links in the case. So that means one can get the perfect fit and I would like to see more manufacturers use 
pivoted female end links rather than male end links, which significantly extend the lug-to-lug -lug measurement of the watch on wrist. Really, the use of pivoted end links gives a better fit, and I really like that uh, Richard Legrand have chosen to include those in the Odyssey Diver. Screw down stainless steel case back. It's engraved to a very high standard and also embossed with the Odyssey Diver uh, brand emblem, as you can see, very eye-catching very aesthetically pleasing to look at and also very comfortable on wrist. And the screw down stainless steel case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. The solid end links are finished to a good standard and a very good tight fit to the case. So the blue sunburst dial is one of my favorite aspects. I also like the perfectly symmetrical 12, 9, 6 and 3 dial layout. It reminds me of the Blomp on 50 Fathoms as does the domed sapphire bezel insert. I really like the fact it's fully loomed with C3 Superluminova and the baton style hands have arrowhead points to them and also I like the detail of the arrowhead tip to the sweeping second hand. So the applied indices and applied uh, Arabic numerals are all fully loomed with C3 Superluminova and I like the RLG brand emblem hexagon which is applied at 12 o'clock. Richard Legrand deserves full credit for a very well executed blue sunburst style. It's a very deep navy blue graduated sunburst style which changes colour in the light. Domed sapphire crystal and I'm pleased to report it's double domed. So it's curved on both the underside and top side and therefore that reduces the distortion effect and the magnification effect one would get with a single domed crystal. Clear AR coating on the underside which is very good to see because it does enhance the legibility of the uh, highly reflective applied indices and Arabic numerals and also the baton style hands. So although it's, it, although it's a very glossy uh, metallic sunburst style and also silver applied indices, the clear AR coating does reduce glare and the highly reflective nature of the double dome sapphire crystal. The double dome sapphire crystal has a beautiful dome to it and as you can see it also complements the domed sapphire bezel insert. The bezel is solid 316L grade stainless steel, nice groove machined underneath it and it's got a nice gear tooth profile to it which is very grippy. So let's test the bezel action. 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect. No lateral side to side play whatsoever, it's a very tight bezel which I actually like. No back play whatsoever. This is one of the best bezel actions I've experienced on a watch. It feels similar to a Steinhardt Ocean 139, if you're familiar with that. And I would actually describe it as tighter than a Steinhardt Ocean 139. It feels similar to a Seiko bezel action, if you're familiar with the Seiko Tersel, alternatively the SKX007. Nice loud audible clicks, which sound very good. And I also like the fact there's no lateral side to side play and no back play. It takes a good firm turn to turn it through the 120 clicks. Nice even resistance all the way through the 360 degrees. So let's just check the alignment. Perfect. I'm pleased to report that the dot loom uh, at the 12 o'clock position perfectly aligns with the 12 o'clock Arabic uh, applied indices so it's very good it's just uh, a very well executed bezel so let's test the crown action the crown is solid 316L grade stainless steel signed with the RLG brand emblem as you can see coin edge finish to a high standard and brush satin finish silky smooth I really like the feeling of the Miyota Calibre 9039 it's got a nice smooth feeling when one unscrews the crown and a characteristic pop, it's spring loaded, it pushes the winding stem out of the movement as one unscrews it. Silky smooth thread action, very light resistance, minimal resistance when unscrewing uh, the crown from the crown tube. So Richard Legrand deserves full credit for a very well executed crown. Now, with regards to the movements, the Calibre 9039 uh, is effectively the same as the Calibre 9015, which is a personal favourite of mine. Uh, it's one of my favourite Miyota movements. The difference between the Calibre 9039 and 9015, respectively, is the date or no date version. So the 9015 is the date version of the movement, and this 9039 is the no date version. So the advantage of using the 9039 is there is no phantom date wheel position. One simply pulls out the crown to the first click and that is the time setting position. 
Often it's the case with micro brands that they use the Miyota 9015 or alternatively the Seiko NH35A. They are the popular default options for micro brands. The problem is when they have a no date dial without a date complication, there is always a phantom date position because both the 9015 and also the NH35A respectively have a date complication. So Richard Legrand deserves full credit for using a 9039, which is a high grade of Miyota movement because it doesn't have a date complication and one simply has a first click to set the time, as you can see, and the movement hacks, which is another advantage of the movement. When one unscrews the crown, one can manually wind it to top up the power reserve to its maximum 42 hours. And it's an absolute pleasure to manually wind the movement to top up that power reserve. Silky smooth, one can find the uh, tension building up in the main spring gradually. So let's just test screwing it back down. Good firm spring resistance when one pushes the winding stem back into the movement. So I like that characteristic of the 9039. It feels very tight, good spring loaded resistance. It feels like a quality movement. So it has 24 joules. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. Hand winding and hacking as I've discussed which are useful complications. And the stated accuracy is minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day. Now I'm pleased to report that this one is regulated to plus 2 seconds per day, which is incredible. That is actually within cost chronometer limit. So I think Richard Legrand deserves full credit both for using a high grade Miyota movement, the Calibre 9039, and also regulating their movements to incredible accuracy. To get plus two seconds per day from a movement at only 429 US dollars really is very impressive. With regards to quality, I regard the Miyota Calibre 9039 as equal in quality to a Swiss made SW200 1 by Solita or alternatively an ETA2824 2 a lab all grade. It has 24 joules, so really it's very close in terms of the architecture to the ETA2824 2. Uh, which has 25 joules and also the SW200-1 which has 26 joules respectively. All of those movements run at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 hertz. So as you'll know from my previous reviews, one thing I like about 4 hertz movements is the characteristic smooth sweep of the second hand. It sweeps around the dial smoothly rather than juddering around the dial. This is something I dislike about Seiko movements which run at 3 hertz and 21,600 vibrations per hour such as the NH35A. The second hand tends to judder, it's, it stutters around the dial due to the 3 hertz frequency but one doesn't get that with a Calibre 9039 as you can see it's sweeping very smoothly. Now with regards to the two button push clasp there is one negative to it. There are only three micro adjustment holes and I would like to see Richard Legrand improve upon this with it four or even five micro adjustment holes because as you can see there is room for more holes to be drilled in the flanks of the two button push clasp. But having said that it is very well executed. Solid milled stainless steel which is made from 316L grade stainless steel. Brass satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks and we have a bead blasted centre section. So very well finished, despite the lack of the extra micro adjustment holes. Good positive click to it. I like the spring loaded action. One can feel the positive click and the two triggers have a good firm resistance. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet. I've simply taken it out of the travel roll and as you can see, it perfectly fits my eight inch wrist. And I really like it. So I think the taper of the bracelet, which tapers from 20 millimeters, at the female uh, pivoted end links down to the two button push clasp they've got the proportions of the three link bracelet done to perfection the mirror polished caps to it also add interest because they contrast with the brush satin finish of the top side and underside of the center links so as you can see the 39 millimeter case gives a sublime comfort level very good fit to the wrist and also they have made the correct choice 45.8 millimeters lug to lug measurement works very well with the female pivoted end links as you can see they articulate very well to give a very snug fit to the wrist 13 millimeters which is very good because it has a domed sapphire crystal as you can see so at 13 millimeters it's going to easily slip underneath the shirt cuff if you wear business shirts it's incredibly comfortable to wear for long periods of time, so the comfort level is 10 out of 10. The feel-good factor is 10 out of 10. 
It's a very aesthetically pleasing piece. I like the clear AR coating on the underside of the double dome sapphire crystal. And my favorite feature is the blue sunburst style, which complements the domed sapphire bezel insert. So Richard Legrand have created an original design. This isn't an homage to anything else, although the case shape does remind me of the Tudor Black Bay 58. So let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs. Now I've got high expectations of the loom because it uses C3 Superluminova throughout. And as you'll know from my previous reviews, C3 is one of my personal favorites. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak performance. Right, so that's now fully charged and it has not disappointed. I would describe it as incredible quality loom. The C3 Superluminova is absolutely beautiful. It's got a nice bright green tone, which reminds me of tritium. And even the loom on the sapphire bezel inserts is also very well done. It's glowing brightly and it's continuing to glow for a good length of time. Both the minute ticks and also the Arabic numerals are clearly legible, as is the dot uh, loom pip at the 12 o'clock position. So the baton style hands with arrowhead points work very well. One can clearly differentiate between the hour hand and the minute hand. And also the large Arabic numerals on the dial 12, 9, 6 and 3 give good orientation and they're also clearly legible. So it's a very well executed symmetrical dial layout and I absolutely love the green C3. This is top grade Superluminova and I think Richard Legrand deserve full credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the loom. For example, they could have used C3 Luminova rather than Superluminova, but this is clearly Superluminova and it's top grade. It's very bright and it's just absolutely beautiful to look at in the green tone. So lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So 429 US dollars, this is a mid-tier piece. And for a micro band, that is very competitive because it is absolutely loaded with the specification. Double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating, fully loomed sapphire bezel insert, which is loomed with C3 Superluminova as are the dial and hands throughout. 200 meters of water resistance and it uses a high grade Miyota Calibre 9039 which as you know is a personal favourite of mine. It is a very accurate, reliable, well proven workhorse movement and the build quality is excellent. I would describe it as equal in build quality to a Salita SW200-1 or an ETA2824-2 respectively. So case finishing is very good throughout. I like the mirror polish to the uh, bevels on the case. Uh, brush satin finish to the top side and flanks. Beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel. So really the negative is the use of push pins. I would like to see Richard Legrand upgrade to screw pins, which would further enhance the piece. And as I've discussed, I would like them. To, I would like to see them drill an extra two holes in the flanks of the two button push clasp for five micro adjustment holes, which would further enhance the piece. Other than that, the piece is outstanding. Yes, this is excellent quality, and yes, it is excellent value. I absolutely love it. It is a very comfortable piece to wear. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's excellent quality and excellent value, and it's just an absolute pleasure to look at. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Richard Legrand Odyssey Diver Royal Blue version. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.